Just got in a new 60 amp MPPT charge controller from Lead Time. The solar charge controller has some pretty nice features that I think a lot of you are going to be interested in. So let's open it up and see what it comes with. We've got a manual. New feature upgrade. Feature one is low temperature charge protection for lithium batteries. And feature two is Bluetooth capable charge controller. Both really nice features. You've got the uh, template for mounting, a temperature probe. This is necessary for the feature of the low temperature charging protection, which we're going to test in this video. It's got some mounting brackets, M8 screws, screws for fixing the brackets to a wooden wall, plastic anchors, copper wire connectors, and heat shrink tubing for number six wires. So there's a pretty nice little accessory package that comes with this particular charge controller. Some real heavy duty brackets for mounting to whatever surface you're going to mount to. Bolts, screws, and then they've got three pieces of black and three pieces of red heat shrink and connectors. These look like these are uh, crimp on type connectors for going into the charge controller so you get a good connection. I really like that and that's the first charge controller that I've reviewed that I've seen comes with that. Just under 11 inches in width, about eight and one eighth of an inch is tall. And then the depth is just over four inches. And it's got some weight to it. I'll put the weight on the screen here for you. Got the standard interface, four buttons, a screen, and then the four indicator lights. On the bottom you have a temperature plug for the remote sensor, your solar inputs, battery inputs, load inputs, and then the RS-485 and a big, huge, heavy duty heat sink on the back. Very nice. So the M4860, 1224, 36 and 48 volts, current 60 amps, input voltage 150 volts, maximum output power depending on your voltage, 900 watts for 12 volt, 1800 watts for 24, 2600 watts at 36 volts, and for 48 volts, 3200 watts. I've got it connected to a 12 volt lithium battery. I have the temperature probe plugged in and I also have 400 watts of solar coming in. We'll turn the battery on. It'll go through its little boot up cycle and then once it's done, you hold this button down for a couple of seconds and then you go into the settings. And right now I've got it set up for lithium but you can choose your battery type here. These are all the options. It has a user mode on it. Then if you want to cycle through the different lithium settings, just keep pressing a short press on that button. This is a 12 volt and you can pick your voltage here. Any of the four options. Press it again and then it, you can change some of these charging parameters. I'm just going to leave it at the stock settings for now. And then this section is where you will turn that low temperature protection on or off and you simply just select on or off. I'm going to leave it off for the moment, but I want to test that here shortly and then just hold that down for a couple of seconds. You'll go back to the main screen. So right now it's just showing a battery, the battery voltage up here indicates whether you're looking at battery or if you're looking at the PV and then the voltage 12 volts. So we're sitting at 13.1 on our battery at the moment. Okay, so now I'll turn on the breaker for the solar. And once it detects the solar, now you're indicated over here that we have solar coming in. And then you get this little diagram showing that solar is going into the battery or power is going into the battery from the array. And then you can cycle through and look at some of the uh, voltages coming from the array. So this is showing the array is 71 volts. Total watt hours. Amps. 15 is for the load. If you want to connect some lights, it gives you a manual on off button here to turn the load on or off. And there's several different settings. You can do a, a daylight setting or a timer with that. Error code page. And then temperature. This is the unit, 71 degrees. And then if we go back, this is the battery temperature or the temperature at the probe. So if I hold my fingers on that probe, it'll start to go up there. 
total watt hours 25.2 amps is what we're charging at, at at the moment so 25 amps going into the battery and it needs to cycle I believe for this to read read properly so right now it thinks the battery is full which is not true and then back to your voltage but I'm going to put the lead time app for this solar charge controller on the screen and what I want to do is I'm going to take an ice pack and wrap up this temperature probe and see if I can get this to activate for the uh, oh let's see we need to go in here first and we will turn the low temperature protection on and we'll see if I can get it cooled down to the point where it will actually stop charging. Let's look at the temperature here. And you can see in the middle of the screen on the app, it's also showing the temperature and it's decreasing. Corresponding with what you see on the screen here. You can see it's charging here. And the first time I've tested this, so I don't know what it's going to do, but we'll see if it'll stop charging. Currently we're putting in 25 amps. Okay, it just dropped below 30, still charging. Oh, and there we go. Error code 15. It did stop charging. So before that warms up, let's look in the manual here and see what we got for error code 15. Okay, here under troubleshooting, error code 15. Under low temperature charging protection status. Increase the ambient temperature above 5 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is under the uh, low temperature protection and as we come up to 41 it should start to charge again so I'm just gonna warm this up with my fingers there's 44 and we should see this error code light extinguish and then it should start charging again here shortly There we go, and it cleared the code. Excellent. So you can see on the app, it's starting to charge again. And you can see a charge here, and the error code light has gone out. So the low temperature protection does work on this charge controller. And that's a real nice feature for this particular charge controller, especially if you happen to have a battery bank that doesn't have low temperature protection on your lithium batteries. Now it does state in the manual that if you're using a lithium battery that has low temperature protection in the battery or in the BMS, then you should not use that low temperature protection feature on this solar charge controller. But it does work very, very cool. So I'm going to go back in here and turn that off. It's on, we'll turn that off and then hold this button down for three seconds or so and it'll accept the change. And then we should see on the app and it just, just clicked over showing that the low temperature protection function is off. So yes, very cool. And as you can see by looking at the app, you can pretty much do all the same functions on the app here. And uh, it has instructions in the manual how to download the app and get set up. 13.7 volts. It's showing the same on the screen. MPPT, current going in, voltage, 13.7 volts. And then the power, 354 watts. That's not too bad. I got a 400 watt solar array connected at the moment. And then below that is your temperatures. You can change from Celsius to Fahrenheit if you... Go to the temperature, hold the button down, yeah, so you can switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius or back to Fahrenheit, whatever you prefer. I'm in the U.S., so of course I prefer the uh, Fahrenheit. Down here you can change the low temperature protection on or off switch there. And then this gives you the parameters at the bottom of the page. You can get all that information right off of the app through the Bluetooth, which is which is an awesome feature. 
historical data you can check that out you either get a, a bar graph or you can have a graph that looks something like this or you can change parameter settings so you can change the battery type here you can change the system voltage and it gives you all the parameters for each one you have to press the locked button put in your code and you can change this to whatever you want but the default as it comes from the factory is four zeros hit confirm and then it tells you here that you need to hit confirm to accept any of the changes you make so that takes a little bit of practice I took me a while to get the hang of that but it shows unlocked right now and if you were to change something once you want that to take place you have to hit confirm and then it will go back to locked and it will take the setting that you input. Super nice charge controller in my opinion and we know that the low temperature protection works for a battery bank that doesn't have it so very cool. If you've got the room for it you need the power you can hook a huge array to this thing especially if you're on 48 volts but uh, very versatile. I'll leave all the information and links in the description if you want to go get more information or find out something that I didn't maybe cover in this video. But that's a look at the lead time 60 amp MPPT 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt solar charge controller. YouTube has put a video on the screen that they think you're going to enjoy. So if you click on that video, I'll meet you over there.